Thank you very much for a nice introduction. It's my great pleasure to be here. There are several reasons I come here. First of all, uh, the, I'm sure, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, we are working together with the local uh, uh, organizer of Hong Kong, and I'm working as a local uh, uh, coordinator of uh, Tokyo. We talk together after the final discussion of the 68 uh, country, six towns. And Hong Kong did a very good job. So I look forward to my final two months there. By the cities in city nature training talk in Hong Kong was so successful. He told me, why don't you come? And that is the reason I can't here to find that secret. <laughs> that is a, uh, and I, and the medal was so hard, and uh, uh, the Amy over there is the ambassador of the uh, uh, Asian and the Civil Science Association. So we're very happy to be here, work, and step forward to uh, make a civil science more in, uh, from um, bottom up to uh, maybe both approaches are be needed, uh, top down and bottom up. But uh, as a conservation biologist, I like a uh, bottom up uh, approach. Uh, I tell you several projects what, what I do involved as a conservation biologist. So today, my title is uh, Experience uh, with the Dakar. I think for uh, the video, we need that, right? Uh, so my title today is uh, Characteristics and the Challenges of Civil Science and uh, uh, several case studies to reverse the challenges of land. And this is uh, one of my title. So, uh, so the, uh, I'm going to talk on four items today. So what is a civil science? And uh, maybe most of them have already, could you just raise your hand? You, you have an uh, organizer of the citizen science project? One, so, oh, two, three, four, five. I'm getting there. So, have you ever experienced a citizen science? Did you join a student science project before? Uh, are there anyone who never heard of citizen science? No. So maybe I don't have to uh, talk about the first item. What is a civil science? That's kind of a great introduction. And second is the characteristics and the strengths of civil science Japan. And third is the challenges, that is the weakness of civil science Japan. So in order to overcome the weakness of civil science in Japan, we are working together uh, with uh, uh, various sectors and community to reverse the trend. So today, I will try to explain Four case studies which I have implemented with citizens, NGOs, universities, local government industries, and, and community. So it really depends on how, how much we have. So mm -hmm. I will yeah, skip some or I'll just explain two, two, two cases. It really depends on time. I'll just say stop. <laughs> <laughs> so, next thing. So what is a citizen science? A citizen science is defined as a scientific work undertaken by members of the general public, often in collaboration with the, the or under the direction of the citizen scientists and the science institutions. This is a well accepted internationally, and actually this is a definition of Oxford English Dictionary. The definition just appeared in the dictionary in 2014 by new. And the citizen science scientists are people who have chosen to use their free time to engage in a scientific process. I will just explain more in detail what is the scientific process mean. And the important thing in the citizen science is non professional citizens are doing real science contributing to generation of new scientific knowledge. And uh, I don't know the name, but the, uh, the person who talked about the uh, bats, that's what, he, uh, what he's doing in the, doing real science with the citizens. Uh, so, next please. So there are three elements of citizen science, and uh, uh, the research, education, and uh, social reforms. So 
by doing research and people, citizens uh, uh, involved in the program, they learn and so uh, uh, through the action research and program solving and those are the results of research and education. Uh, these outcomes will uh, uh, can uh, make us social reforms such as the sustainability, conservation, and useful decision making. So, uh, yeah, next please. So, uh, the, so there are several classification of civil science, but I'll just explain here as uh, a classification of civil science based on the level of participation of research process. That is a research process I'm talking about. Uh, 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 Area. So, so, uh, so in, in uh, the research process uh, includes these five uh, steps. So when I do start the research as a researcher, so we follow these um, 10 steps. First, define a question or issue and gather the information and find out what I want to do is really and uh, know it, know what it done, and it's a uh, very meaningful scientific perspective of the field contribute um, to problem solving. Uh, to gather the information and develop the explanations and present data questions and collect samples, analyze samples, analyze data, interpret the data and conclude the dissemination of conclusions is custom result in quite a future. So this is a 10 steps and uh, usually research is uh, far. So so in case of citizen science, there are three uh, uh, yeah, categories. One is contributory, that is the citizen science yeah, involved in only these five, five and six steps. Most of the citizen science, more than 80 is uh, uh, classified in contributory. So, but we are focusing on co collaborating. Collaborating includes three prongs, five to eight steps. And cooperative includes all the steps with exactly the same as researchers are doing. So now we have a new phase of citizen science. We got the recent, recent advance in information technology and social changes have facilitated rapid growth in citizen science projects. The volunteers have an unprecedentedly access and scientific resources and tools and can participate authentically many uh, research activities and the scale impossible in the past. So people say that citizen science in the 18th century is, a, is the same root as we, but I don't think so. It's quite different in quality and quality and quantity. So that's because it's a open, new doors is open because it's a yeah, new technology and social changes. And as a result, citizen science contributes in various domains of natural and social science. All the majority of uh, projects are focusing on ecology and conservation in a new and exciting ways. Okay. So uh, next, I move to uh, the second uh, topic, characteristics of citizen science to come. So one of the uh, uh, characteristics of Japan is uh, we have a long historical data set more than several centuries ago. This is one example. This is a diary of uh, uh, Hiromatsu. He is a well-known court figure of the Edo era, or by the foreign entry in uh, 1644. And, uh, and uh, mm -hmm. so he attended uh, uh, Seiyokan Palace in Kyoto, and uh, he mentioned that people enjoy watching her and cherry blossoms took sake. Do you know sake? Mm -hmm. uh, provided by the <laughs> <laughs> So this kind of uh, uh, diary has still remained yeah, the Edo period. And let's read. This is a much longer. This is a record of the date of cherry blossom page around Kyoto has been recorded from 11th century to the present time for, for almost 120 years. So this figure shows uh, that when the chair was full in bloom, 
And uh, so this is a temperature calculated, uh, temperature was calculated according to Jason uh, data and from following the water bosoms. And why is it so? This is uh, done by the professor in Osaka City University and find out and, uh, the, this is the temperature. The temperature has uh, uh, raised over this period, but in recent uh, decades, sorry, uh, the, the rapid increase of the temperature and highest value. So, so this uh, uh, long lasting record is really important when we see the what really happened in climate change and technology. So, so we also, Japanese, like and, uh, highly concerned about seasonal changes in wildlife. So now we have only four seasons, spring, summer, autumn, winter. But before, in the period, people divided uh, one season into uh, six uh, subdivisions. And uh, we call it 24 seki. And uh, for one seki, they divide into three, and that's uh, the total in one year consists of 72 call. And each call, uh, people select a, a typical natural phenomenon and the phenology of plants and animals. Maybe in China, they have the same kind of calendar. Do you know? Yeah. yeah. So actually, Japan is uh, introduced this, uh, we call it the Japanese calendar, but original from your country. Yeah. Next bit. So this is a, uh, uh, so, so with this calendar change, maybe because of the temperature changes, they have to change the uh, uh, flower and uh, animals. And, uh, uh, so, next please. So, so there is a lot of data set, but not analyzed. So this is one of the examples uh, in our lab we uh, analyze what kind of uh, 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 plant and animals uh, uh, compared with uh, uh, traditional Japanese character in Edo Hero with Kalendeta in Kyoto. So we see in the spring phenomenon is uh, getting uh, earlier. And uh, autumn, for example, the color changes April is getting later, maybe because of the climate change is increasing. So third the characteristic Japan is the first contributory school project started in schools. So I will show you some examples. Like Mario Tree Crane survey started in 1927 at one middle high school. And uh, Citato uh, survey sensing Citato laying eggs on the beach started in 1954 by the student at one beach. And now on 40 beaches across Japan. And later, national, nationwide habitat survey of Firefly started in 1997 by the publisher of textbook of children. And uh, do you have like done uh, Firefly very much? Japanese love so much. Mm -hmm. That is kind of a symbolic and uh, uh, insight. So, uh, that, so in, in this and uh, 20 years, so habitat of the uh, well, fireflies are uh, rapidly decreasing. So, it's, uh, so we see. Yes, but it's, uh, uh, other examples, so maybe citizen science projects started in the 1970s. Uh, and most of them are contributory approaches, focusing primarily on getting samples. This is one uh, example of uh, the Darien survey, studied in 1970s by an NGO in Osaka. And they asked citizens to send the flowers or seeds of the Darien's. And currently, these uh, specimens are used for DNA analysis by this uh, institute. So this is so this is the southern part of uh, Japan, and the red uh, road dot shows more than seventy percent of the specimens collected by citizens occupied by, by invasive uh, uh, dendrarians. 
not native. And there is a hybrid that is, a, and a, so that is a reason they have to, uh, so just see the flowers, they can't distinguish. Before, they can, but because it's a hybrid, they can visit. Uh, then, uh, so DNA analysis is very important to classify and find out and so many. So uh, the green dot shows uh, less than 15% in uh, So the fifth physical characteristic is uh, abandoned wave trains uh, amateurs across the country. And actually, the first fund red list of Japan was published in collaboration of NGOs and scientists in 1989. Then the national red list was issued by Ministry of Environment in 1991, based on a long lasting observation series. So, the six is a collaboration of the nation and national organization various sectors started in 20. 2000. Nationwide citizen science projects are managed by big NGOs, and this project has now integrated into one national project. I will give you one example it's called Monitoring Science Thousand. This is a collaboration of among the Ministry of Environment, NGOs, university scientists, and many volunteers, and drawings from the Nation Biodiversity Strategy in Japan aimed to detect changes in ecosystem conditions through a long time and hundred years and the citizens monitor biodiversity about a thousand sites in 19 different ecosystems to know that what kind of changes happen in the future. So this is a system how people work together. So that is a so that is a just me. <laughs> so, next week. So this is a, uh, so uh, Satoyama is a typical Japanese uh, landscape uh, for agriculture. And that consists of uh, party fields and, uh, and, and uh, deciduous forest for, and uh, so, so there are it's, uh, almost uh, one, uh, 190 uh, sites for monitoring, and class scientists are scientists involved. Others are uh, all the yeah, uh, Ministry of Education, ASK, and local NGOs. Raise your hand if you want to uh, start monitoring the uh, monitoring. Yeah. <laughs> so those are done by the, the citizens' organization, um, distributed in the whole country. Next, please. So that is one of the examples of the, the, the result we take. That is a great mammals. They lived only in the southern part. But uh, so this problem started just in uh, 10 years, but gradually they are moving to the north. So, so they are supposed to do 100 years, but even 10 years mm -hmm. get the main result. So third, I'd like to talk about challenges of civil science in Japan. So I interviewed major Japanese environmental NGOs and organizers. <laughs> so the common challenges facing major Japanese NGOs as a one's long-term data are well are not well analyzed for uh, modeling and hypothesis and research. That is important as a science. And second is collaborative and cooperative approaches have not well implemented. And these approaches have potential to contribute to achieving more practical goals, such as education, conservation, and mutualization outcome of civil science to decision making process. And third is decreasing the number, especially young people. And uh, sustain issues and the participant is also an issue. And variation for the project as well as participant, that is uh, uh, to know uh, their concern and interest uh, for the organizer. And uh, that is not looking up. And it is a few way based in science have implemented in Japan. And also very few international projects. 
So this is a dish we have too. So in order to over overcome these insecurities, and uh, we try to work together with uh, many uh, projects. So I, I talk uh, just to, uh, today. So so one is the uh, main purpose is the dem demonstration hypothesis using uh, the climate change and minor trigger that was done by nation wide and using contributory process. And second is the variation of created habitat and using a dragon fly as an indicator point that was done locally, using co creative and approach. So this book, uh, maybe I don't read this, so because of the timing. So first is the third is problem solving and uh, for invasive plant species in the river lake. Uh, that were done, done in local, and that is cooperative and work based. And this is a biodiversity species, and so focusing on species richness, city and bird work, that is, I'm talking about city nature challenge. So I'm going to talk about it. So, so, so first, the case study is uh, verifying the hypothesis of effect of climate change and technology winter bird in Japan. Okay. So I just introduced uh, on the global climate change and technology. Uh, technology is a pioneer of seasonal activity of plants and animals, and species in the world are gradually responding to global warming. Such effect will become an increasing threat to many species and ecosystem coming decades as the climate change continues to change. So technology event has been used as a key and simple process in which to take and um, uh, track changes in ecology of species to global warming. So challenges on study of global warming uh, and technology is what observed results are heavy bias in many ways. One is the most of the results obtained in temperate regions, especially in Europe and North America, very few sites in Asia and Africa. And second is most of the study are focused on spring technology, and few studies focus on autumn and winter technology. The main study focus on few species and a few sites on the interspecies level. So most of the studies are needed to fill this gap in order to have a global picture of Take the global form of technology. Okay. So, hypothesis on influence of warm or temperature on higher cycle of a biology bar, what we are focusing on. So, so, this is a cycle of the biology bar. They have need two sides one is breeding side and one is the wintering side. So, when the, so the uh, uh, autumn come, they uh, start migrating to the wintering site. And then the spring come, they go back to the green site. So the temperature become higher, they will uh, yeah, come to the wintering site uh, um, later and uh, 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 go back to the green site earlier. As a result, staying in the wintering site might be shorter. That is the prediction of uh, uh, global climate change. Next, please. So we did a survey for Hokkaido, and, uh, uh, Yokohama, and Fukuoka. And next, please. So the observation of birds are made by the natural observation forest in three sites, but are recorded daily and radio transit truth as a forest and around the vista center by ordinary systems, including experienced forest staff and members of Wildlife Wild Bird Society of Japan together with experienced volunteers of the last 20 years. How researchers can monitor every day for 20 years, only the citizen can do that. So, right. so, so this is a list of winter birds who continuously visiting seaside for about 20 years. Okay. This is a, 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 a birds, 
um, constantly having suicides in Hokkaido and you know, um, um, and drop that. Right? So this is a temperature increase in suicides. And from only 20 years, the temperature increase and twice as much compared with the uh, uh, world uh, average temperature because of the, uh, uh, the most of the uh, cities and uh, uh, not only for climate, but also the uh, heat island phenomenon. So, so, so this is the pattern of duration stay, six winter birds and over 20 years in Yokohama. So this is a six bird and a, and on the average. So the first arriving day is nine days and later in autumn. And the, the last departure day in spring is 21 days earlier. As a result, duration in stay in Yokohama is almost one month shorter. That is a drastic <coughs> change. I was just amazed. And many newspapers have been reported. And this is a one of the clear evidence to show in winter birds. And so in this piece. So, so we can see the same trend in Hokkaido and Fukuoka. So in the case of uh, Fukuoka, 30 in almost 40 days and shorter, and the Fukuoka 16 days and shorter. So that is a uh, happening common in three uh, area in, in Japan. Okay. So there is a conclusion. The winter birds mig migrate to Japan shows a clear evidence of arriving later departure hours. <coughs> Resulting in a half or one month shorter dur duration of stay. So our result emphasizes the need to carry out research of many species at multiple sites to get a better prediction of effect of global change, warming, and phenology. So dedicated citizens can accomplish the uh, weakness of research of scientists and demonstrate the hypothesis of important science questions by long-term monitoring with a precise answer. So uh, I talk, moved to the second study, uh, case study, that is a variation of created ponds using dragonfly as indicator mm -hmm. in the industrial area in Yokohama. As I mentioned, Japanese are good at recording data and not so well analyzed. So, so I try to change the <laughs> situation. So I just introduction about dragonfly in Japan. Dragonfly is very popular and an insect in Japan. How about here in Hong Kong? Yeah. Yes, yes. Well, I have to know that. Because dragonfly is an important symbol of Japanese culture. The uh, kimono patterns in the, in the, we can see the dragonfly in kimono patterns, and it appears, and this is a bamboo craft for children. And this is an uh, arrow shell for the uh, soldiers. Mm -hmm. Soldiers are like a dragon bride they, because they are symbol of strength. Do you, do you know why? Yes. <laughs> why? <laughs> why? I, I gotta guess. Yeah. Because they're predators. They hunt down insects. Sorry about that. Dragon fly just go straight, never oh. retire. Oh. The soldiers are fighting in the battle. Those soldiers never retire, just go ahead. <laughs> so that is a, a symbol of the strength. That's why the soldier like a dragon fly and use in the patterns. So the dragon fly is a Sorry, yeah. I've already mentioned so it's okay. The popular <laughs> charismatic species for children and adults. Yeah. So, so this is uh, a project uh, done by Yokohama. And uh, Yokohama and the uh, municipal government started the Dragon Pie project created in uh, always various sectors in the city as a part of eco policy, ecosystem up, 
uh, wine biodiversity. So around the 120 dragonfly ponds were created in parks and elementary school, playground, streams with the goals of making this pond as an ecological step, stepping stones in large ecological network of the whole city. This is a places and some are schools, yard, and some are parks and others. And to, so this is a reflect of all this created by the city government, Yokohama promoted created dragon pride pond. Let's try to make a dragon pride pond. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a, I talk about the uh, uh, creation of uh, pond of major companies and uh, in the most uh, heavily industrial area in Yokohama Bay. This is a 10 company, major com companies, joint project of uh, Dragon Pride in the uh, ECO project. But, but, but what is the major characteristic of a uh, Dragon Pride pond? Is, it any, is there any uh, insects or, <laughs> or, or animals uh, also in the pond? Sure, sure. So but, just but, but, uh, the drone fire. How can you ensure that the drone fire will be? So actually, in, in Yokohama, there are a lot of uh, uh, rice paddy fields, and uh, there are a lot of uh, dragon fire there. <laughs> so they are one of the popular creatures. Yeah. But uh, almost all are gone because of the habitat and ponds and rice parties that are gone. Uh -huh. So they try to some, uh, create a, a new habitat for the okay. uh, insects. So, so dragon <laughs> fly is a uh, symbol because people like it. So just to uh, increase the biodiversity, <laughs> ordinary people is not attractive. A creative pond called the dragon prize map uh, <laughs> appears to the citizen. <laughs> so anyway, Five and uh, ten and uh, big companies created uh, dragon five ponds in their properties. Next, please. And this is uh, several examples. In case of Tokyo Gas, uh, they created a dragon fire at the seventh uh, floor at the uh, rooftop. They have a huge and uh, yeah, uh, biotop and. Uh, this is a Tokyo Electric World Company, uh, power company. This is uh, just in front of the bay, but they have a very nice and uh, yeah, uh, dragonfly pond. And this, this is a picture company in Japan. So but this is just an uh, example of 10. Four, um, Question. Sure. So were they subsidized to build a pond, or mm -hmm. was it the company heads? also believe the message and basically mm -hmm. made sure the company you know. Yeah, actually Yoko, municipal government of Yokohama make a rule. They have to reserve 30% of greens. But they've already made an uh, uh, industry, it's building. So, so it's impossible to expand the green area. So they said uh, government okay. So to create a uh, water space is also fine. Should be included as a uh, uh, increase the percentage of green area. Yeah, that is the one thing. So the monitoring drought on five pond is uh, as yeah, a down in the Bay Area. There was a project started in 2003 and. Uh, uh, people monitor the changes in number of dragonfly species, composition, uh, migration of dragonfly uh, species with it in a creative pond, monitored by citizens, uh, students, and industries, and uh, officials, uh, the government, and researchers. Uh, that was done in one week, and um, 100 and 150 people joined to monitor. So, this is a method and um, something I'm making. Uh, Marking for dragon fries, catch dragon fries and identify species and write up the right identification number on the wing and release and then catch and how many uh, have a uh, return to original or move to another pond. So, mountain dragon fries, that's fun. <laughs> 
So this is a one of the example of expanding distribution of rare species. This is, looks like a, a, a butterfly, but it, it's a really uh, uh -huh. unique and uh, dragonfly species. So this one is just uh, one pond uh, appeared in 2004 and 20, 2005. But in 2006, uh, they migrated and uh, stayed in a, a, another two ponds. In 2009, they scattered more. So uh, this is used uh, in culture as a stepping stone. Yeah, it, it, it does prove time. that the, the farm is success. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> So this is a migration dragonfly among the queen ponds and dragonfly reserve area in Yokohama hillside. So we can see so uh, 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 dragonfly is migrate and uh, another pond, but I see so many of them are hitting not the, uh, uh, among the, uh, the ten ponds. Uh, many are uh, hitting for this area. This is a, a kind of a, a drug a reservoir and used as a reference site. So this is rich in nature. So most of the, when, when I'm a mother of the German pie and try to bear eggs, then I not choose this area, <laughs> heading for the best way. So, yeah, so, so this is also used as a, but I can say this is used as a reservoir, but um, uh, this is uh, connected and, uh, uh, yeah, that's your too. What's the difference between the blue line and the red line? Uh, blue line is a, a faded pond. And, uh, yeah, so th th that's it, a nature reserve the area, so <coughs> some are hidden pond. Oh, it's not always. Uh, 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 mm, mm. I forgot. Mm. Looks like the blue mm. is a common skimmer. Mm. What does that mean? A common skimmer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So scarlet skimmers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's good. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 So, so third case is, is a we've used the Syrian science project in basic plant species in, in Tama River. So Tama River is the biggest river in Tokyo. And uh, here, here is our outreach and uh, campus of Tokyo City University. And uh, one of my mission is working together with the community to create a new project for sustainability as well as a uh, project. So, the current status of invasive species in Tama River. The Tama River is a, neighbor, is a major river in Tokyo. It's a paradise of invasive animals. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> another name of the river is the Tamazon. The Tama <laughs> River and Amazon. And actually, 350 species are introduced into uh, the Tama River from Amazon. So they like a tropical fish. And when they cut it, the color is getting dark, and darker and darker. Some are not interested in, but they don't want to kill, just release in the Tama River. That might be happening. Mm -hmm. So, right? So, and when we see the plants, uh, I was just amazed. This is also the paradise of invasive plants. <laughs> <laughs> So we work, so actually the, this is a survey of a government and other researchers in the invasive plant species in, in Tama River. And, but it's a, that, the Tama River is a, it's a 138 kilometers. But the, the mountain is just and, uh, 24 sites and just uh, uh, check whether there, this species is, exists or not. So that is not enough. So, so evaluate the special paper distribution of each species. So that is the reason we start the project. Okay. So this is a station survey of invasive uh, plant species. This is Tama River. I did the uh, branch of Tama River and just merged here. Um, 
So the, we just follow, there are so many invasive species here. So the Citizen Science Project, it's a, a way to select only six and plants, survey for six selected plants, uh, big data collected by citizens via the smartphone or immediately, uh, 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 well, immediately visualized in the dashboard application with a map and the graphs. And first we count the individual numbers, but some are spread and covered in the whole area, so it's impossible to uh, count the number. So we change for the measurement. So we just uh, measure the yeah, community, community area by measuring the lengths and height and uh, widths and uh, density to figure out the size of so, so, so this is uh, working together with many uh, sectors in the community, local organization, NGO, biodiversity academy, which I'm uh, 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 working as a director, and NPO, Setagaya, and uh, Mizube Design Network, and Neighborhood Association as a town, and uh, Setagaya, uh, uh, this is NGO, and uh, the university, and uh, other universities and company, S3 Japan, they uh, helped to create the website in cooperation with the uh, uh, university campus too. So this is an implement of the program of the yeah, area. People really enjoy. So, uh, so that is a one day event, and uh, in the morning they collect um, they take a photo and uh, after lunch, they share the uh, data and discussion about Pakistan, what we can do. And so, so this is uh, one of the examples. So, uh, so this uh, case in 2006, we, we, we divided the five groups and compete each other. So this group uh, sent out uh, the photos, 170. So it really depends. This is kind of competition thing as seeing it a challenge. So this is a how the so we found out it's a at a yeah uh, plants and uh, very uh, yeah uh, different from um, this is very small area but uh, at a uh, six uh, each plants uh, di distributed different from side to side. Next please. So this is a, so we see quite different. We don't, don't say in details, but uh, it's a very close to <coughs> site, but quite different from side to side. Mm -hmm. So pe people start thinking, why? What is the cause of these differences? And the one key is a data of a six set. Environment is different. <laughs> it's just that way. So we start uh, uh, monitoring what is the difference between these five Sites. So the project continues. <coughs> Next, please. So this is a way to evaluate the, uh, in the area, size, and volume of the vegetation of each uh, species. Okay. So this is a final. Is it okay to yeah. continue talking? Yeah, we can Okay. The first is a case study of city image challenge in Tokyo. Next please. So I just mentioned about current situation of species biodiversity in the world. So I just, uh, we stayed in uh, the same facility of WWF and uh, Hong Kong and met the teacher. And uh, so I, this morning I did data because of the decent living planet uh, uh, index is created by WWF. And uh, so this, this is a, a living planet index measured by diversity by gathering population and data of bears, vertebrate species, and characteristics, average change of others over time. And uh, so from 1970 to 2010, 80% of the yeah, uh, uh, index is uh, decreased, uh, so, so that means the uh, uh, situation of uh, species diversity is uh, 
have to be made a degrading once. So, sorry, I had to date you this afternoon. So, 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 so next piece. So, this is all for, uh, shows a rapid uh, uh, rate of distinction of species in the most western island as in uh, this planet. This is also uh, uh, sources of rainy planet levels in 2016. So this mentioned most of the shares and issues is uh, the biodiversity. And here is a climate change. So this rate means beyond zones of uncertainty. And uh, so uh, there are a lot of uh, environmental issues, global environmental issues, but uh, 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 rapid uh, loss of biodiversity is the most uh, certain uh, uh, issues. So sorry, this is a. Uh, I didn't have a time to change to <laughs> Japanese to English, but so, so, uh, so lack of citizen science data on species of diversity in the world is also an issue. And IPCNA uh, uh, make a red face, but they focusing and analyze only 85,000. And uh, so in case of global biodiversity information facilities, they gather all the information, including the data of city and naturalists. But the data is required really big. And 86% of the species in the world has no name. Yeah, so, so it's important. If we don't know the name, we don't know how these species play in the ecosystem. So I think that species is still very important, but not well accomplished. So we can uh, rely only for the scientists and government. We didn't have to involve. So this is the uh, data of uh, species and diversity that is also very biased. Most of the data and uh, GB has come from North uh, uh, America and Europe. In case of Asia, just Africa should pass it. So we citizen science in Asia should be a player in our world to uh, change that situation. Next, please. So in the case of GB, only two countries in Asia to join, only Korea and Japan. Maybe next, maybe Hong Kong, I hope. <laughs> so next, please. So I started the city nature terms Tokyo, making a reprint and asking like it. And said, uh, one of the uh, uh, difficulties wow. for Japanese is uh, all the iNaturalist is done by English. There is a Japanese translation, but that's not enough. So we, we translate it in and uh, make a manuals to register the app of iNaturalist that have to take some pictures and send it to you. And that is people working, they are doing the job. So, so, so oh, it, sorry, that's uh, maybe because it's a computer or something. So anyway, so this is a result of a top 10 among 68 and uh, the uh, cities participate in city in Asia China in 2018. So, amazed is Hong Kong. <laughs> uh, the, uh, among 68 cities, and, uh, Hong Kong is in uh, one, two, three, four, five, eight, and uh, most uh, observations and most pieces and falls in uh, uh, among 68 cities, and uh, Hong Kong is uh, one, two, three, four, five. Most of German. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that was the best manual in Japan we've met. Uh, there we go. Yeah, <laughs> Japan is just in the middle. Yeah, but the best manual for sure. <laughs> anyway, this is a just, um, yeah, so I was just amazed how it's uh, possible. So that's us, scan. <laughs> sure. During the conversation, or the final conversation, yeah. you know, on a, a form. 
Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you some of the secrets, but not all of them. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a result of a non-U.S. series, Hong Kong. Japan is a Japanese book. Do you guys know the organizer for JL? Uh, there was a chap from. Uh, uh, Where did you get his contact? Clang Valley. Yeah, it's, uh, like a, yeah, there's a Clang Valley guy who works in for a an institution down there. I think. Yeah, I think he's an academic guy. So the, the, the main organi organizer is the uh, California Academy of Science and Natural History Museum of Los Angeles. There's uh, two uh, organizers. They ask um, uh, um, 68 cities to join. And, uh, so they did a survey, uh, asked them to answer the survey on you know, the internet. So we translated in Japanese and you know, uh, database and uh, web -based. So, and uh, I just did uh, tell you some uh, result. <coughs> so, have you carried out the wireless survey before? Only 20% did. And uh, it, it, is this your first time using this mobile app? Oh, also, oh. Nandi Kai. Mm -hmm. This is very passive experience for them. So, we are excited about this thing. So as a result, the taking part in this event, do you intend to? Uh, so, so this is a very likely and likely. So that anyway, this is a very high percentage. And uh, take part in similar future event, do you want to do? And uh, almost 90% said yes. Enjoy a wildlife group, charity of biodiversity project in nature, almost uh, 75%. Promote such initiative and encourage others to pass this paint on 60%. Likely, very likely, likely. Uh, encourage wildlife in your gardens or surrounding areas, uh, our city. And I learn more about the local wildlife, very high percentage. So, yes. As a result of taking part in this event, do you agree or disagree with the following statement? So most of the highest is that uh, I have learned about different ways I can continue to protect the local environment. And the next highest is uh, I have learned about the organization's project working to monitor and protect animal funds in my area. So, so, so this is a, a, a perception of the uh, program different different agenda. That is a, a, I did as a, um, my colleagues and um, the independent samples and TTS may have given just see how the different what the mayor is I'm interested in. <laughs> so why you of that a signal country different from genders. Female have a signal to higher score of foreign barrier. I want to change to, I, I want to challenge to a new thing. Isn't that nice? <laughs> <laughs> Many experts will be able to identify species based on photo. That's the next case. So this is a variable that affect participant willingness to join the future program. So just a minute, this one, I just, um, this one, so this is a variable that affects the respondent satisfaction level of the program. So, so I just mentioned the conclusion because it's a time constraint. And so, uh, do you just, uh, go, yeah, look, uh, sorry, just go back. So I just mentioned the results of statistical analysis. The part, the participant over 30 years old has a higher satisfaction of the program and willingness to participate in a future program. Perhaps because of the reasons that participants are different from those of younger participants. And those participants are aware of an international program has a higher 
Faction River, as well as the willingness to participate in the future program. For those who had a difficulty reading the English words, as a higher willingness to participate in future programs. That's what I'm really glad to know mm -hmm. that. They don't, they, even they can't understand English, mm -hmm. they are willing to join for the future program. For those who felt the program meaningful at a higher satisfaction level. So whether the program contributes to environmental conservation does not affect participant satisfaction of the program. Those who felt the program was a fun had a higher satisfaction with those who felt connection to environment conservation. So it is important to know that uh, how the participants and, uh, 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 yeah, uh, evaluate the program for, uh, for the future program. Next, this matter, uh, uh, this matter, uh, I hope last slide. So the reason for participating in the program is many participants are interested in nature. As they mentioned, I love nature. I want to learn about nature. We can't live without nature. And few people are participating for self because I gain confidence. So um, perception of the program, posting photo was easy, but installing app was not. Participant felt sharing data meaningful <laughs> and wanted to see other people's data. However, they did not want to connect with other participants. That's what I can't understand, but <laughs> so many of them are satisfied with the program. But um, great achievement with the program, participant felt familiar with the features that line their names. So yeah, I just mentioned uh, the, so why did that I naturally, uh, I, it's a, a city nature challenge and I was really fascinated. So I'm actually I naturalist, using I naturalist as a app. People, you are the community people can organize their own project. Actually, more than 4,000 projects are uh, uh, already studied. And, uh, using iNatural as app. So I created a program while in the uh, uh, Takota Magawa town near my university campus and survey of wildlife. And the main town people join. Next please. So this is just a um, city university is a campus and uh, that the student so there's an open um, campus day you know, to the, uh, the high school students who want to uh, 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 join on the you know, Tokyo City University and come and see the campus. And the student uh, 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 ask high school students to monitor the wildlife on the campus. Most of them work very much. So I just started another program using iNaturalist. I really recommend you to start your own program. So that's all. Thank you very much for listening. I will start with a question uh -huh. which uh, I ask myself, uh -huh. somebody who does citizen science, uh -huh. but it's very uh, practical. Uh -huh. um, how can somebody um, make a living uh -huh. being a citizen scientist full time? Full time. Oh. Become a uh, full time is uh, not an uh, uh, so that they are frontier. Uh -huh. So so that might be possible for a retired person. <laughs> they use uh, all their uh, spare time for uh, the full time volunteer. But those uh, people, young people, are uh, working for a company might be difficult. Yeah, yes. but uh, mm -hmm. but but many levels of citizen science, and uh, I know. Uh, uh, 
Sebo, who are interested in uh, monitoring, and they decided to go to graduate school and become a researcher. Okay. So, academia. Yeah, so, yeah, academia. So that was a very yeah, great thing. Yeah, I always try to promote them to work together. So that might be a kind of a one of the final goals as an educator. See. I understand the invasive uh, species mm -hmm. animal were released mm -hmm. into like the pond, the river, oh, whatever. Right. Right. But where did the invasive uh -huh. plants come from? I mean, yeah. Japan is an oh. island by itself. <laughs> mm -hmm. How did it get Tourists. there? Mm -hmm. So we, so there are many reasons. Why is uh, we uh, imported many and uh, rice and uh, we and uh, we can. Uh, vegetables and uh, soybeans and some and seed are connected, yeah, attached to the yeah, <laughs> uh, container uh, included in, uh, you know, when collected in a uh, uh, foreign country, they uh, put them together with the basic species of seed. So what are you going to do? Send, send some animal out to eat? There is a raw of invasive species. Right. So uh -huh. those are listed in a uh, uh, raw. They have to be eliminated. But it's not an easy task. Mm -hmm. So the best way to prevent is not to bring invasive species. Once they introduce, so there is no enemies. So uh, easy to explain. It's a kind of paradise for them. So there are all countries. There are a lot of competitors. But in the new world, no competitors sometimes. And there is a niche for them to survive. So what kind of method? What kind of method are you going to use to eliminate them? So in case of uh, plants, uh, uh, cut. <laughs> yeah, uh, we don't <laughs> use any chemicals. Mm -hmm. like Actually, that the invasive species is really hard to union in many countries in the world. I mean, how much here? Because of the people are moving around the world so quickly, and many things are imported or exporting, and so it's really difficult to try to control. <laughs> no, no. no way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have two questions wrapped sure. into one. Sure. <laughs> um, the, the, the first is that you showed us the cherry blossom uh -huh. started 1,200 years uh -huh. ago. But when they did it, they were not thinking, we are citizen scientists, right? They, they, they didn't think this way. What no. were they doing? They what? Were. Yes, what were they doing? So when they're uh, emerging, why do they record it? Did they have well, any they essential They just uh, really enjoy the cherry blossoms. Right. So they just to record. So sometimes the uh, emperor invited people to enjoy the cherry blossoms of blue. Mm. So we Japanese love the uh, cherry blossoms very much. So it started uh, at, uh, from uh, south to north mm. in three months. Mm -hmm. Some migrate like a bird to enjoy the table <laughs> some festival by moving north. Oh. Some are very crazy. <laughs> so, 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 so that is a good uh, example. For pleasure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the full the full question is then back then they measured it but they did not know that in the future this yeah. data will be for yeah. comments. They, they just uh, yeah, they just record it. Exactly. It's a no uh, yes. purpose. So, yeah. so, I can, uh, so, so the, the but maybe we can say the same, <laughs> same thing in a country, for mm -hmm. example, uh, agriculture calendar. Uh -huh. That's important. When they, they start um, planting, or mm -hmm. in case of uh, the French, the, there's a lot of recorded grapes. Yes. When the grapes should be uh, uh, harvested, is important. Yes, for Japanese, not the agriculture purpose or uh, product. But you just to have a cherry <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so, so the question yeah. I want to ask is that back then we measured that. We didn't know it was very valuable information. Right. What do you think?
today uh, that we do not measure, but that is very, very valuable for one in 1,000 years from now. Yeah. What should we measure today yeah. that we are not measuring? Oh, yeah, so, so nobody knows what will become important because we don't know what kind of uh, what we will uh, have. But uh, so now we can record the main ways. So uh, if we have uh, many variables that might be good to uh, predict in future, mm. then uh, also it's possible. But um, but it's not not so easy to convince people in case of a citizens if there is no purpose and uh, it might be difficult to convince. So at the current, uh, uh, just uh, 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 yeah, the uh, focus mm -hmm. on issues that the community had a uh, facing or uh, invasive species. Now many people are very concerned about mm -hmm. invasive species. Especially introduced and uh, fire plant is introduced uh, last summer. So we are now uh, mm -hmm. before invasive species a problem is uh, sweeping issues, but now not sweeping it's <laughs> become hard mm -hmm. rain. So, mm -hmm. so maybe it's better to yeah, uh, pick up on a sub subject which is a uh, citizens are really interested in or mm -hmm. ask uh, citizens what kind of things you are interested in rather than just see the hundred years ahead. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, I guess Caesar, I would be interested in your thoughts on this exact same question you're asking <laughs> Professor too, because I guess like in your research around microplastics, plastic in the ocean, do you think that there is a role for citizens to kind of contribute to that type of data as well in your field? Mm. So for example, the particular data set that I, I think about is maybe 100 years ago, CO2 mm -hmm. so was not a very popular yeah, indicator, yeah, yeah. but now it is the main indicator yeah, for climate right. science. Yeah. And when I look about radioactivity mm -hmm. in the ocean or sure. plastic in the ocean, right. it's a big yeah. indicator for mm -hmm. future mutation. Yes. And so I'm, uh, for these are indicators that I'm looking at, uh -huh. but, uh, but I'm wondering uh, from the perspective of biodiversity, especially in the context of the sixth extinction, mm -hmm. what are the specific indicators we should be looking at mm -hmm. uh, that we are not looking mm -hmm. sufficiently? Mm -hmm. Because uh, in the cherry blossom, we measure it because it's beautiful, because of our pleasure, mm -hmm. but we don't think from the system perspective, we just think our own pleasure, mm -hmm. what matters to us, yeah, not what yeah. matters to the system. Yeah. So I'm just wondering if you... Yeah, uh -huh. that is a, uh, yeah, nice too. Yeah. So most of the cities are just to build up and animals and birds and mm. just to know what kind of uh, birds that come in my, bird, in my garden. Yeah. Or my, yeah. in, in, your, in your opinion, what is the other way to attract more people to participate in that's the reason I come here. Because, I think the important time is in your previous speakings, uh, there is a uh, new dimension, so for example, the advance of the instrument, uh, the new technology, sure. uh, that will uh, oh, yeah. That will attract more people mm, sure. to use this mm -hmm. kind of uh, yeah. <coughs> uh, tools, yeah. uh, not just recording, yeah. but for the real time analysis. Uh -huh. uh, that is that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, for examples, I, I think yeah. your the, the, the calendar is very is pretty good oh. in, uh, in over the world. Oh. Yeah, because the tool is. Maybe we can start. Uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe we can start. It's in yeah. Hong Kong. Uh, maybe yeah, you, yeah, will, yeah. you can have the same kind of report when yeah. you go back to the <laughs> 300 years ago or so. But I quite agree with the opinion the new technology brought yeah. um, many fascinating. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. in case of uh, uh, yeah, I'm not sure if uh, yeah, it's yeah. use yeah. an AI, and yeah. even there is yeah. no yeah. scientist uh, yeah. so that yeah. uh, 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 tells us what kind of species. So that was very really fantastic. Yeah. So yeah. there's a lot of issues we have to solve, but uh, that might be, that's never happened in five years ago. 
So that, so that uh, uh, we, it leads to yeah. farm the weight yeah. and, and, and farm the other uh, add values feature mm -hmm. to this kind of process mm -hmm. and so that to make it more fascinating and fantastic sure. so right. it attracts more people to sure. more this, yeah. this, pro this that, kind of project. That's what I <laughs> but, uh, uh, but attract to citizens is not so easy. <laughs> not so easy, uh, yeah. I do yeah. my best yeah. but still yeah. uh, we want to. Not I easy, but cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there are actually two websites in mm -hmm. Hong Kong. I Naturalist is one of them. It's mm -hmm. called Mall mm -hmm. Hong Kong. Yeah. And then another one is Hong Kong Bug. Bug. Hong yes. Bug. <laughs> so. <laughs> sorry, sorry. So, uh, and now because everybody has a phone, mm -hmm. you can go mm -hmm. out and you walk and you take picture and then you put it on the site, right? Mm -hmm. then Ask, you ask, what is it? Please ID, and there are a couple of people here. They are very knowledgeable, so they'll go on telling you the Latin yeah. name, blah, 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 mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you get interested. Mm -hmm. So you are kind of like looking forward mm -hmm. to the next hike, because we have a lot of hiking here. Mm -hmm. We have like 40% of the country parks in Hong Kong. So a lot of height, you go out and you see. And in the beginning, I thought, oh, the pretty one, a butterfly, the ugly one of the mall. I was so wrong. <laughs> I was so, and, and, and then because I put it on the website, these experts say, no, no. How you can tell is look at the antennas. Now I'm being educated and got more interested and got more deep into it. So what you can do is develop, create a couple of websites and use something called, I learned it recently, called macro camera. So they can blow up the bug, seeing things you would never seen before. It gets so, so interesting. And those macro camera, I think they're very expensive, you know. And and, and I think the children, would, the young people, would definitely get very interested. Mm, yeah. Because a bug, you look at it just a bug, but mm. with the macro, you can see mm. they actually have personality, mm. you know? And so you kind of like gain them hook, mm. basically. Mm. So, but in case of an insect, so just the photos might be something difficult to yeah. identify. Yeah. So if just let them know the key to identify. Yes. But it's very different from species to species. So I think there's a still limitation. But uh, the same science project program, so so and, uh, it might be okay. Yeah. So I but think website yeah. and then get people to educate, oh, oh, oh. you know, yeah. people, then oh. they they feel they are doing something <laughs> meaningful, have a purpose, oh, oh, oh. and that will probably yeah. encourage, encourage them, right, yeah. to but more this yeah. kind of thing. But, but the efficiency is, is quite low. Efficiency. But that's going to get means, more people involved, yeah. <laughs> which is part of the whole conversation. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes. So many websites. Every day I cannot mm. see all the, the webs. So, well, the Hong Kong yeah. Park and the uh, mm. iNaturalist yeah. for the mark are very, very popular. Mm. It's In very Japan, good. most of the people use web, web uh, iPhones, but uh, yeah. not so many people join yeah. Yeah. web yeah. and uh, citizen science program. So most of the people join is uh, uh, we have a date. Uh, very few join in the industry from a website. So we have to find uh, ways to hunt attract those people. So it depends on who you're yeah. trying to attract. It might appeal to different people, but you need to target a certain group of people. What will work for young people yeah. will not be attractive to a different sort of... So, mm -hmm. And then Gert took us out to do a mapan, you know, and then we register and then we get this kid have all these little jars mm -hmm. and then we went out and we were like poking around you know and got some of these birds come back and we were talking about and that day we have a lot of children young people you know yeah. mm -hmm. 
it's really important. To yeah, so I think you might want to create some groups like that. Mm -hmm. Balkan and go out and look for bugs and come back. And then we have boats and try to identify them. What, what am I looking at? I have another question, so it's okay. Oh, who is that? Yeah. yeah. Is it okay? What time are you? Again, I think we're done. Okay. Okay. Um, so I, I'm less knowledgeable about this, so I might be vague, but um, I'm wondering, because talking a lot about um, concern about getting popular interests and people involved in terms of their citizens, but is there concern about getting academics involved where I use the definition of saying that a lot of these projects are in some way guided mm -hmm. by that? Is I think involvement of scientists is very important to uh, to make a very good and uh, serious science project in science meaning. Uh, so most of the people don't know the, the what kind of a hypothesis or questions or issues are now hot issues in the uh, academic world. And, uh, so final goals is the uh, result outcomes of the civil science data is published in the peer review scientific journal. So most of people don't know what kind of issues is uh, uh, variable, so science can help. So they, if uh, citizens select and several topics, uh, we recommend this might be a uh, 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 possibility for the contributor as well. So, and also in order to maintain the quality, so science might help too. And sometimes uh, analyzing messages is very uh, difficult for ordinary people to read. I can say the same thing too. I don't know the rest is the <laughs> analytical method. So, so I think. Like as well. So yeah. it's, it's definitely a collaborative effort. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. a lot of citizen science against regular professional science. So. The whole effort is actually, as Chloe said earlier on, in terms of the science, in terms of different citizen science with different level of contribution, you could go from something that's actually academically driven to get citizens involved with just the research and data, all the way to the other next stream. It could be co collaboration. Basically, it's the citizens coming up with the ideas, well, say, air quality, and there's no one, but obviously, there's people not looking at that, but at the state, it's something that was unique to what you want to do. You probably need to get people involved both professional, potentially private business, and as well as policy makers, so it's a collaborative effort as well. So it really depends on the capacity of the topic. Yeah. Well, Just the uh, rule of citizens and the scientists are different rules sometimes. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, citizen comes first in citizen science. Yeah, I, I yeah. guess I'm asking more so because I'd like to see the citizen science enter the academic spaces. So if it's a publication, it's usually the way that we Scientists, uh, it's uh, just a cause in the world. So now it's become open data. So the citizen can also contribute to call as a scientist in order to get the big data. So citizens, yeah. it's, uh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. That, 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 that's a big problem. You know, the, 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 the science in the universities, people think, oh, that is the, the domain, that's the holy grail. And other people should say, oh, I think that is, that is what citizen science needs to, are trying to do is to show, hey, we can do science too. And by doing this large scale projects, people from universities can then say, wait a minute, this data, you know, and scientists and universities love analyzing data. So, so that's one thing that citizen science can do is, is collecting, this, collecting data and then even collaborate with the analysis of that. Um, but it's not to say that you, because you're a citizen scientist, you can't re do real science. You, you can do the same 
you can actually, even now that you can do the same kind of things that PhD students do in the university. And you can do those kind of projects and there's nothing stopping you from, from publishing your results. And, and these kind of things will be peer reviewed and, and so on. So you, citizen science is really good science. Yeah, but I guess I, I want to <laughs> like, say There's several websites where you can publish your own stuff, so. Yeah. Yeah. But there's, there's a lot of yeah. journals. Many of the journals will, you know, if you, if you publish, it's peer reviewed and then people will go out. And I guess just to add to your point around breaking down the barriers, that's exactly what citizen science scientists are trying to do. It's basically building a community with all of those different people. And um, as Joe was saying, like, well, professional scientists know what they're doing, they've had that domain. And sometimes it's not necessarily whether they want to or not, there is that mindset we need to change, but sometimes that's not really their forte. Mm -hmm. And so what we're trying to do is actually be facilitators. Look, they may not necessarily know how to sort of in layman speak explain the scientific process, or they might need help to actually get other people to help them with the process. Um, vice versa, you have, might have, like, let's just say someone in the creative space, they can potentially help these people market the project. So you probably need like sort of different disciplinary sort of skill sets to actually make it work. So the connectivity issue to break down the journalism forum. So that's what we're trying to do. Maybe I'll add to that. So in the case of Maccabay, actually we are a place where a lot of people come to us asking for STEAM education. So the parents want their kids to learn about mathematics and engineering. And actually many of the parents, maybe they say they care about the environment, but they wouldn't take their kids to do uh, bug hunting or and so actually we kind of pretend we're going to do like steam and we take them to do citizen science mm -hmm. so we, we sometimes we have to meet people where they are and they don't know that they would care if they knew and so, so it's it. yeah. and so we what we're trying to do is to sometimes subvert a little bit the education system and kind of put the content and the things that we care and our agenda in the education uh, as, a, as a transport so we hope that we're going to be building next generation of citizen scientists. Yeah. And part of it in Asia is to that point, it's probably about the next generation. Sometimes the mindset is a bit harder to change for some of the other people, but definitely in the kids, there's a lot of emphasis on, on STEAM or STEM, so that's definitely one way to get in so that the barriers aren't built up in the first place. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, I think there's a little bit of emphasis on sort of biodiversity, environment, so that, but I think it's more broader. It's just how you apply it. Takes a little bit more thinking because it's a little more outside the box. Maybe let me uh, try to uh, push back the question too. So, so the citizen science is more about the environment, mm -hmm. and you asked the question about social science. So, where do you see the connection between, say, environmental science and, and social si social science? How would you bridge that gap? Uh, for me, it's politics. It's politics. Yeah. Or, I mean, and, and citizenship, education, and environment. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably it's So you think, for example, that we could bring some elements of citizen science in social science, potentially, or? Sure. Yeah. Where, where would you see that happening? Uh, well, I don't know specifics of what the, So I think there's a way to teach anything in the context of something like that, and just in terms of community, in terms of just in terms of um, just the format of the citizen, these kinds of things of connectivity mm -hmm. in the way that um, why people care. Mm. I guess to add to what Susan's asking in terms of it's obviously a difficult question, it's not very obvious, so I think it's important to have those ideas, but just to give you a different top-down view, basically the conversations we're having, to my point earlier around us working with the UN around the sustainable development goals, it's actually not a subset of the SDGs in terms of the environment, so the biodiversity, the obvious portions, it includes the social justice, the poverty, and all of those as well. So one of the um, decisions we made when we had a meeting back in Geneva in May, is that as a global citizen science partnership group, in terms of connecting all these different networks, which must be one of them, is that we're actually gonna address all the SDGs using citizen science, not a subset of them. So to that point, from our view, it does include social science. But to see these questions, I don't think we're necessarily there in terms of how we apply it, but the goal is to improve it. So we still sort of need to come through what, what those solutions look like that we have. I have any questions for, for, this, for the speaker. Sure. So, um, Japan uh, is uh, the fastest aging population in the world. 
the yeah. aging. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and so it means, uh, according to projections, uh, the population of Japan will decline mm -hmm. in a new future. Yeah. And uh, it's already happening. <laughs> it's already happening. <laughs> <laughs> but like dramatically. Yeah. And so uh, the question is that typically when human population goes up, uh, biodiversity goes down in most cases. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so my question is that with the human population of Japan going down, do you expect to see biodiversity in Japan going up? <laughs> <laughs> is, is it a trend that we can predict? Uh -huh. And uh, is, is it something that actually maybe Japan would become a new biodiverse paradise because of the decline of population? Mm -hmm. is, is, it, is it something it's that we can... Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to answer yes or no. Uh -huh. So in case of a wise kind of field, uh -huh. so they are reaching biodiversity because mm -hmm. then, uh, uh, people, yeah, but if people abandon mm -hmm. a wise party, so not reaching by diversity. Is that right? Uh, mm -hmm. And huh. before, well, the people planted deciduous uh, uh, trees mm -hmm. in order to use the charcoal. And uh, in, in, before in Tokyo, the native vegetation is an uh, evergreen forest. Mm -hmm. So there's no sunlight during the in spring. And now people planted their uh, deciduous trees in you know, the, the charcoal. Mm -hmm. So that was a uh, the leaves are falling during the autumn, so when the spring comes, the sunlight penetrates on the floor. Mm. So there are lots of uh, spring ephemerals, mm. the plants are growing. So the human, in, in, in half man made uh, uh, forest is uh, rich in biodiversity. Interesting. If these are abandoned, the loss of biodiversity is half. Huh. Yeah, so I said yes or no. Is, uh, uh, the, yeah, so. So what you're saying is that yeah. biodiversity is not going to increase. Yeah, it depends on the situation area. But I worry about a lot of biodiversity is that involvement of humans. Are there, are there uh, cases of biodiversity going up mm -hmm. in some region of Japan? Has, been, has it ever been observed? Or a uh, citizen scientist effort just mm -hmm. reduce the rate of? Mm -hmm. So when in case of uh, uh, high population, High density area with uh, no grains, and uh, that's actually what's happening is there's uh, empty houses, mm -hmm. nobody lives, and uh, that was uh, used as a uh, uh, yeah, community garden. Uh -huh. uh, so, mm -hmm. so we tried to change, so, but in case of an uh, urban area with a uh, high population, like uh, uh, has already faded, but there's a possibility to recover. <laughs> so it really is a crisis, and we try to manage, um, but uh, mm. the shortage of uh, young people <laughs> might be a really big issue. Mm. Yeah. Can I have both like the clients? So both like the clients. Oh. Uh. <laughs> 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 from WWF Hong Kong. Oh, so nice to meet you and it's my honor to attend your oh, lecture. Um, our organization is mm. having been doing different citizen science projects in recent years mm -hmm. and one of our difficulties is that how to ensure and like enhance the accuracy of the data collected by the citizen scientists. Um, we, we really believe in the power of them and, the, and their help, but sometimes it's really um, a problem for us. Like we need to take time to tidy up what they collected and then it's a br quite practical question. So I just want to see if there's any tips. <laughs> From so your side, this way is to make the method simple. Mm. So, so, so the method used uh, not many errors or uh, influence of the quality of data. So, so, so we have a suitable topic, uh, which is uh, good for the citizen to monitor. So. So I selected just six invasive species in the Tama River Basin. 
So we try to uh, say the pipe species, which is a clear to identify for the citizen. So we check all the hotels after the same. Mm -hmm. So there's almost no mistake mm -hmm. for pipe species. So mm -hmm. how to design which is suitable and uh, try to avoid the questions of the quality of data. Mm -hmm. That might be very important. To so uh, the, when they organize a project, think about what kind of a yeah, uh, task we ask for them without any mistakes. That is very important. After I get the data and how to eliminate such easy tasks. Interesting. I think exactly that. The design is definitely the most important part. So the preparation up front is probably more important. Mm -hmm. It's afterwards a little too late. So in the conversation that um, during the UN forum, a lot of the people had talked about in terms of the context. Mm -hmm. So getting the right contextual information at the time you capture the data is important. Um, but as Goldstein said, basically keeping the method itself simple is important. So at the end of the day, it comes back to the project organizers coming up with the right design. So it actually does take a bit of analysis before you do the project. So you understand who your target audience is, what they understand, mm -hmm. and keeping the method itself as simple as possible so that they understand what they're doing. But I guess keeping the scope very simple as well. So mm -hmm. Very important. So organizers are uh, important role is very really important. But to bear to work together with the citizens, yeah. If they feel very difficult or they feel easy and almost no mistakes and it's not a good idea just to research it yeah. and yeah. think about it. Yeah. What you feel that might be the brain for the citizen science. Maybe I'll Maybe I'll ask you a question. You, I think that's your question, but maybe in a little bit different way. So you have done many work in this uh, field. Uh, what, how do you evaluate the success of a citizen project? What do you think oh, makes a, a project really? It depends on the project. Mm -hmm. If the uh, project is a uh, 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 problem solving, mm -hmm. we have to uh, identify, uh, evaluate that. Right? But if the program is very focus on education. Mm. We have to uh, ask the questions for the participants, how they satisfy or what mm. they concern. This way is a get a survey before the project and what kind of uh, interest they have. We, we did, uh, I did an, uh, another project of uh, green, greening at the town in Yorokohama. And uh, we, uh, we did a survey for the citizens. So 800 um, houses, and uh, the project is greening of the area. But after the uh, survey, we found out most uh, uh, interesting topic for them is uh, know each other, mm. so and uh, no more student. So 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 we try to involve that that kind of uh, project as a greening project. So greening is not the first priority <laughs> for the neighbors around the university. Oh. So it's important to know in advance what kind of pe things people are really concerned about. And, and mm -hmm. uh, that's affected the willingness to participate in the project. Really interesting, and then um, I in the in the presentation you have mentioned like um, uh, there are very few young people trying to participate in the program. Have you looked into the reasons behind it? Because I think it's not just a, a problem in Japan, but it's like in Hong Kong. I mean, exactly. citizen science is yeah. Because I have involved in some some kind of citizen science project in Hong Kong before, and then it's like some the more. Um, more, the people who are more interested in this kind of project, like the media, yes. ethnic or the retired people, mm -hmm. and then, yeah, I mean, it's, it's maybe like when they reach a certain age, they want to be interested in the nature of or the young people. Maybe they're not just they're not they they don't have the time or they don't have the resources for it. Have you really looked into the problem of the uh, reason behind this kind of um, uh, this kind of 
platforms we have to observe. So it's hard to. I, I'm sorry, I just can't understand your okay. question. Do you know the reason behind uh, where, uh, why the young people don't want to join this, this kind of citizen science project? Uh -huh. So when they are the small yeah. and, uh, and uh, they are interested in, but then, uh, uh, in Japan, uh, maybe in. Uh, same in Korea and China. The competition to uh, go to a good university or go to a good high school. So they, they just spend most of the time for just doing yes, uh, uh, go to cram school after school after uh, yeah. So they just have uh, no time to go out. That might be the one reason. So but uh, those uh, young people are uh, those are uh, uh, adults. Have, who have an experience in, uh, in, 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 uh, uh, and enjoy uh, in the nature, they return when they become adult as a mother or father. And so I think that uh, uh, so it's important when they are very small, they have a exposed to nature and wildlife and have a sense of wonder. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.